Well, if you look at the facts, you look at the documents that we have intercepted, it's clear that over the last, I would say, six to eight months, there has been considerable activity, a certain uh, fresh energy, verve, and there is really a high interest in proceeding with this transaction. Uh, particularly if you pay regard to the 27th March 2024 uh, letter that uh, SNIT sent uh, to Rich Royal Hotel. And if you look at the protest letter that lawyers uh, for the minority shareholders in Rich Royal, uh, the lawyers are Ishan Anderson, Yeboah, Obing, and Co. Unlimited. Uh, this is dated as recent as 10th May 2024 you know, protesting about the arm twisting, you know, the lack of due process, you know. So it should tell you that there, there is current activity and force to just go ahead and finalize, close this deal. That is why if you look at the, yes, you can look at what the lawyers wrote. That's why if you look at the uh, reliefs that are being sought in the petition that I have sent to Shraj. Mm -hmm. I have drawn Shraj's attention to the issue of time, how urgent this is. If you look at relief, right. relief number five, and probably I could go through all the reliefs very quickly. Uh, relief one, that Shraj launches a full-scale impartial investigation into the imminent prospective sale to Honorable Brad Champong of 60% shares of hotels within SNES investment portfolio, which raise fundamental quest concerns bordering on conflict of interest and abuse of power. Two, that Shiraj investigates SNES conduct and procurement processes regarding this matter and issue, particularly with a view to unraveling what led to the numerous violations of due process and unfair treatment, as these lawyers are raising uh, in the case of uh, Rage Royal. Three, that Shiraj investigates the appropriateness and ethical concerns of Honorable Brad Champon, who is a director and the sole beneficial owner of Rock City Hotel Limited, to be selected as a sole prospective buyer of 60% of SNES stake in the hotels within its investment portfolio, albeit under opaque circumstances by his colleagues in government who were all appointed by President Nanado Danko Akufuado. Four, that Shiraj makes a determination on the eligibility of Honorable Brian Champon to participate in this transaction, having regard to his non-compliance with Article 78.3 and 98.2 of the 99.2 Constitution. Mm -hmm. And five, relief number five, that considering the 45-day time frame stipulated in the above mentioned SNIT letter of 27th March 2024, which lapsed on 12 May 2024, urgent steps be undertaken by Shraj to halt this apparently sleazy sale, which is not in the national interest. So um, this petition also raises the issue of time, that mm -hmm. there is now uh, a lot of activity. You see renewed interest. There's a certain rush to finalize this deal. Even lawyers of shareholders are protesting mm -hmm. and, and all of that. They've given uh, others a few days to comply. So, and then you are seeing all of these visitations to the hotels. Even chiefs are saying they have spotted uh, the Honorable Brian Chapo and his team, you know, inspecting these hotels. So, time is of the essence. And I hope that Shraj will expedite action. Then I must also raise a very critical issue, what, what, what which, is, is which is the selection of the transaction advisor for this deal. During the week, I put out intercepted Central Tender Review Committee approvals, mm -hmm. and it confirms that we have spent about half a million dollars on the transaction advisors. And you see, mm -hmm. if broad consultations had been done, Organized labor was listened to, their reps on the SNIT board were listened to. We could have saved this money. I mean, an organization that claims to be broke, and that is why it is desperate to sell hotels under its investment portfolio, paying this much money. And you look at the Central Tender Review Committee's uh, uh, concerns raised on 20th December 2019 about how the evaluation went, how an evaluation panel member even refused to sign. You know, and don't forget that this is money that even if we succeed 
in scuttling this deal. We can never retrieve this. We can't get this back. Yeah. So already, Ghana has lost about half a million dollars. 7.1 million Ghana cities. That is why I keep talking about, you know, how we initiate public policy, how we implement public policy, how we formulate public policy. In taking this decision to sell majority shares in these hotels, who was consulted? I mean, you are public officials. Mm -hmm. You are acting on our behalf. Sovereignty resides in the people. Engage us. Engage parliament. Listen to organized labor. Let us know if you have nothing to hide. Let these things be open. Let's have a national discussion. Mm -hmm. You do all of these things, you know, virtually behind the scenes. And here we are. Already half a million dollars is gone. Now, let me quickly mm -hmm. respond to this accusation. I am determined not to be provoked. I'll focus on the issues. You can call me a pretender. You can call me names. Now I've developed a thick skin. Look, since I started doing this oversight work, hmm, you want me to give you the list, the monies I've saved for Ghana? Tell me. You remember Oslo Chancery? Mm -hmm. The attempt to buy that expensive building. I saved Ghana $8.5 million. Presidential charter jet travels. You know how much I saved Ghana? Over 100 million cities. The president finally had to listen. They were calling me all kinds of names. They even said I didn't care about the president's security. National Cathedral. They spent $58 million for the world's most expensive pit. At least, if I hadn't sustained that crusade, mm -hmm. by now, we will have spent $450 million. That's what government was intending to spend. At least I've saved the taxpayer $400 million. You want me to go on? There was this e-transfer deal in the 2021 budget. Saved Ghanaians 242 million Ghana cities. They were attempting to sell the airport lands mm -hmm. in the heaven scandal that I put out. Then you remember West Blue. 187 million they were going to pay. I can go on and on. So I know that this, this tax that I've taken, when you appear to be removing money from people's mouths, profit, and uh, you are trying to protect the public purse, you are blocking leakages and seepages and lutocratic schemes, you certainly will not be popular. You will not be liked by some people. They will come after you, call you names. Me, well, am I the one who sold Merchant Bank? Me. I was deputy minister for education. What do I have to do with Merchant Bank? That I should be attacked this morning. And I thought that they would say that I put in a bid to buy Merchant Bank. I thought that's what all of this attack was, was leading to. Did you hear me support that sale? We all have ideological you know, persuasions. And you can belong to an, an organization. Hmm? Have you ever heard me uh, support divestiture, support sale of state assets? Or say that it is good for public officials to buy state assets. I, I've, I've, I've been, if there's anybody who's been consistent, whose position on these matters is known, right from Supreme Court records since 2008, it's me. You know, so you can insult me all you want. You have been sent here to attack me, poor venom and vituperation on me. I will not. I I will not be distracted. I can't take that. I will not be distracted. Right. So you can't say me. You are me. So who said you to come on? You can't say that. Okay. So so you can you can you can do whatever you want. I'm going to stay focused. You can't say that. You can't say that. Who said who said me to so? But would you agree that at least Parliament should have? Because you are colleague members of parliament, your colleague member of parliament makes the point that at least parliament should have been in the known of this transaction. Honorable well, Chiang, you're also a deputy you minister. See, so you see, parliament have been in the known about this. You see, in politics, people sometimes can speak to the law, as we all know. There are other times people speak to people's emotions. Can anybody tell me the procedure in selling state assets? whether there's a requirement to go to parliament. Is it part of the requirement? And has that been done in the past? Senate assets in Tamale, in Bolga, uh, Senate bungalows in, uh, in Accra, which were built by, for MPs, were all sold by the NDC. Did they come to parliament? Is that part of the requirement? I have said that the principle the TUC has taken, I fully support it. You support that? I support that if we can protect state assets, 
and 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 at least for the sake of creating jobs for Ghanaians and all that, I do not have a problem with that. Okay. But the position of my 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 colleague in in trying to pretend as if they are more interested in in protecting this asset than any other party when the worst happened under them. Okay. And so and I, and let yes, me finish. Yes, yes. I have told you that the procedure was followed. If the management of Senate took the decision to sell those assets, it went to the board of Senate, and the board approved of it. It was advertised locally and internationally, and people bidded, including Rock City. And Rock City presented the best bid. Tell me which law has been broken in this process. Tell me. Tell me which law has been broken. So, but in the case of them, the NDC, when they were selling Merchant Bank, Somebody presented a bid of $91 million. And another person presented $34.4 million. And they chose the $34 million over $91 million. And the board did not even approve of the, the $34 million. And at that time, Senate, hey, TUC was against it. So TUC, like I keep saying, they are consistent. They are speaking in the national interest. So you think but, 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 but my brother I, I, I here no is, is, only be, is only problem. being mischievous and being politics. I am telling you. Okay. He can, he, he's talking about protecting public press and all those things. Was he not on the NDC fighting for judgment that we paid? As of Tom, have you forgotten? Okay. The so, same person. So we can, we can trade all of this on the plate of politics. But to what end? Yeah. And I think that, madam, that's where the concern is, is yeah. it not? Yeah, it to is. To what end? It is. I it, think it, that it doesn't matter which, and uh, sorry for rudely interrupting mm -hmm. you, you know, I think it doesn't matter which uh, party is in power. For us, workers and ordinary Ghanaians, who are the downtrodden, we just abhor politicians selling even football pitches to themselves. I think it doesn't make sense to me. You know, sometimes it seems as if people just get into public office to desecrate everything that has been built, not by themselves, but by others. And it doesn't matter which regime is in power. And to reduce this discussion to just politics, I'm sorry, it's, it's, it's not on and it's a no-no. Because if we have to trade accusations, you know, and this party did this, and that party is doing that. For goodness sakes, we're looking at workers' monies. For goodness sakes, workers can't just take it. When some months down the line, we were told, if you don't take care, SNITs, funds, or pensions monies are going to dry up. And then you come back and tell us you are selling SNIT investments, which when we... And we, we, need to, we need to ask the questions, and we need to, we need to, we need to find out why this... Because I think too often people get into public office poor. And then when they're leaving office, they are, they are so, so filled and, and, and so corrupt and, and conquering everything in their way. I'm sorry, it's not on. You know, so please don't let us reduce this discussion into politics or to politics. Let us look at pension funds because we're all interested. Ordinary people. I mean, people take... 400 Ghana cities at the end of the month. Isn't that a big deal? It is indeed. Is that not a big deal? And so for me, if we have to sit here and trade accusations because we think that this party did this and that party did that, I'm sorry, it's not on. I'm sorry. Well, you, you have to leave us. But then again, at what point should this have even been of interest to Parliament? And just a quick one on that. And then... We will conclude on, on the other matter that you have to speak to and then we'll leave. So this claim that everything has been above board and that due process has been followed is very preposterous, totally ridiculous. If you read organized labor statement, organized labor has pointed to some of the infractions. For example, organized labor states, mm, they are 20, 20th May, uh, 2024 statement that the original proposal of the sale of SNIT interest in six hotels has now reduced to four. Mm -hmm. We hold the view that this renders the whole process null and void. And that's right. the procurement law. When you 
advertise, you say this is what you are going to do, this is what people should bid for. If you change midstream, you have to start the process again for people to return that. That's the position of the procurement law. Mm. And organized labor has identified it. Organized labor against states that the proposed payment terms have been varied from the original MOU based on the, trans the recommendation of the transaction advisor. That is what organized labor is telling us. That what the transaction advisor says should be done. The payment terms. That is not what you have offered to the Honorable Brad Champon to pay. It's different. And these are coming from insiders, board members of SNIT who represent organized labor. And that has not been challenged. Then there are more breaches. If you read what these lawyers are raising, in the case of Rich Roy, and that's why organized labor made the point, that you are treating these hotels as if they are all the same. Mm -hmm. Before SNIT went to advertise, under the first April 1999 shareholders agreement of Ridge Royal, there should have been a shareholders meeting. They should have called a general meeting to discuss this matter. That was not done. They hurriedly went to advertise, went ahead and, 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 and selected the prospective buyer, the Honorable Brian Champo, until the lawyers had to protest. But by, 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 by this letter, mm -hmm. in the case of, of, of Ridge Royal, these are clear procurement breaches, fundamental. You know, the arm twisting, the lack of due process. And you see, this claim that the Honorable Brad Champon has made the best deal, he is the savior for snit shares and all of that. What is the track record? Last week, I put out what happened at the Kumasi Catering Guest House mm -hmm. when SNE decided to sell their 25% shares to the Honorable Brad Champo. I have the minutes of that meeting, dated 16th March 2022. From these minutes, if you read page 2, the SNE's proposition on the sale price, Mr. Osafu Mafu, I'm quoting verbatim, mm -hmm. Mr. Osafu Mafu stated that the trust had an independent valuation done and the value of the trust 25% was 8.6 million Ghana cities. Will you believe that at the end, Rock City was allowed to pay far below the valuation of the 25%? They offered 7.4 million, and I have the Rock City letter here, offering only 7.4 million. Ghanaian workers lost 1.2 million. This is a letter signed by Rock City, dated 14th April 2022, way below the independent valuation of 8.6 million. They offered only 7.4 million. And even that, if you read these minutes, Snit said that this transaction should be done in dollars. Because of, we all know, <laughs> lawyer Matic Pebu was talking about how this currency has collapsed. Bloomberg says it's the world's worst performing currency. So let me quote Mr. Chum of Snit. He says, Mr. Chum followed with a suggestion that the sale price should have been pegged in United States dollars and pegged at the current dollar rate to the CD. This was declined by the Rock City team. Mm. They declined. And you see, the irony is that when SNIT is paying the transaction advisor in this deal, it's in dollars, $491,000. And yet, mm. when they are collecting money from Rock City, it's in CDs. They allowed Rock City to decline. And even that, Rock City paid in installments, which was not part of the agreement. In installment. So what is happening now, if you talk to experts, is that the proceeds from the hotel, which is now called the Grand Regency Hotel mm -hmm. in Kumasi, is what is being used to pay. I mean, can you believe that? Well, that was a so, Kumasi catering. Yes, yeah, 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 Kumasi catering. So when you look at this unholy alliance between SNIT and Rock City, and you look at their track record, nobody can convince me that we will have value for money. Because we have already lost money. Right with the shares in what was known as Kumasi Catering Guest House. So that is the fact. I speak to documents. I speak to evidence. So mm -hmm. look, let's this claim about, oh, this is some savior, some superman who's come with a lot of money to save our hotels. These hotels didn't need saving in the first place. Mm -hmm. I am even questioning the fundamental principle, the policy decision to sell these hotels. Who took those decisions?